Hi, uh, this is Brian from Provision Studios, and I'm recording a uh, beginner or introduction to uh, Pro Tools 9. This is a uh, basic or beginner's tutorial. This is part three. Parts one and two were recorded uh, one, two weeks ago, part one, and then part two was recorded last week. I'm trying to do one a week, uh, try to keep... Um, things moving forward. I don't get to do this as much as I'd like, so anyway, I'm sorry if they're coming out rather slow. Um, either way, um, I'm not going to waste much time here today. I'm going to get right in. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a track, take it in and uh, apply a parallel effect, or we're going to, you know, work in like, uh, you've heard of parallel compression maybe before, we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to take an auxiliary input channel and we're going to route our recorded track through that auxiliary input with, and, and then we're going to add an effect to that auxiliary input and then we're going to adjust the level so we're going to be able to have our recorded uh, track going straight to our output mixed in with some of our effect that we choose to, to blend the two uh, signals together. Anyway, Pro Tools, I'm going to open up that same session that we had been working in. And what we got, these are those two tracks that we had I was monkeying around with, so to speak. They're not important. Okay, here's a good a good uh, tip. Um, if you've got a lot of recording going on, let's say in a session where you've got multiple tracks, you've deleted some, you've added some, uh, had a guitar player come in record, then you chose, hey, let me do something else. Those regions that you recorded are going to stay here in your regions list. If you go to regions, select, unused, which you can see is uh, uh, Apple, Alt, or, or uh, Control Option, U will be your unused. You can see they're both deleted. I deleted those, so those are now considered unused regions. And then you would again do... Um, Apple Option or Control Alt B. That's bounce. Apple Shift B is the remove. Yes, so it removed both of those regions. Sorry about that. It's Apple Shift or Control Shift in Windows. So it will be Control Shift U to select your unused regions, and then Control Shift B in Windows to delete those regions that it has selected for you. Anyway, okay. Um, arm and track for recording. Two ways to do it. If you are in the mix window, which is here, you would click on your arm for the track you wanted to record. Then you would go to View, I'm sorry, Window, and Transport. And then from here, from this Transport window, you would arm the session for recording, then you would click on the Play button. Once you click on the Play, then you are recording. Okay. The other way is in the Edit window, is obviously... Again, you click on the track you want to enable, and then you can see your transport is up here in your taskbar. So you would click on that and then there. Um, for this purpose, I'm going to um, work in here first. I'm going to get my levels. Okay, that looks good. I got my bass routed into my bass track. I'm going to go to Window transport and I'm going to record from the mix window. Anyway, you can see here I've got a one bar count off. It's, now it would by clicking that I've disabled 
the the the, the count in or the lead in so it's it's going to go right to record by clicking that I've enabled a four beat because I'm in four four a one bar or a four beat count off to lead me into when I start to record anyway I've got my track uh, record enabled I've got the session record enabled so now I can either click here on the play button or I can hit the space bar either way it will initiate the session into record mode and I'm going to do that now Okay, so now basically what we got here, I'm going to close this transport window. We've got that uh, couple bars I recorded right here. Now, um, up here you're going to see this grid right here. If you, th there's this icon right here that looks like a wave. If you click on the upper uh, upper button here, it's going to increase the size of your wave file here that, of all your tracks obviously clicking on the uh, zoom out will decrease the size of it if you click here you can see it zooms in horizontally this zooms out horizontally so for this purpose we're you know we're dealing with a a small section here I'm just gonna go right there okay now to engage playback you would disengage your record enable on your track hit your spacebar alright got the idea sounds fine I'm gonna mute my click don't don't really need it at this point okay now we're gonna get into the point where we've got our track we've got it recorded we want to now add some effect to it to you know make it sound a little more professional so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my setup and my playback engine again I'm I'm done the recording phase now I'm going to go into mix mode and the first thing I do is I want to change my buffer size I'm going to go to 1024 and click OK so now if I went to record again I'm going to have that latency or that delay that you know so I want to always keep in mind that when I'm mixing I'm going up the reason I'm uh, w uh, why that is is because when you lower that buffer that hardware buffer you're putting more of a strain on your processor to give your signal that immediate throughput you know in other words the, you're making your computer work a lot faster so that you don't hear any delay from what you're playing or minimal delay when you're mixing you know you're not long you're no longer concerned about playing or hearing what you play when you play it because you're no longer doing that anymore all right so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna go over to my mix window and I'm going to go to track new all right I'm going to create a auxiliary input I'm going to use a mono because I have a mono bass track, so I'm going to keep it mono. You can see auxiliary one. I'm going to take that, I'm going to name it bass chorus. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got my bass chorus auxiliary input or my auxiliary bus, or in a, it's an effects bus, uh, literally. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is the input I can pick anything from here these are all routable buses within Pro Tools I'm just gonna pick number nine okay now what I will do again I like to keep things organized and uniform I'm gonna go into my IO under setup 
I'm going to go to my bus number nine and I'm going to double click on it and rename it base chorus and hit return or enter and then OK. So now my bus not only is is the the channel it's on I'm sorry is the the track it's on uh, named base chorus but now the channel the bus channel also is named base chorus so I can go over to my bass track and in my sends I can select bass chorus you'll see a fader appears all right so now you'll you'll notice that it's, I'm still going out to my main output, which is right here, my master fader, but I'm also routing a signal to my bass chorus. Now what I will do is I will insert a bass, or I, a, I'm going to insert a chorus onto that track. Let's see, let's pick a uh, deep chorus, make this a little extreme. Take the mix up to about 65. And now I'm going to do a playback of what I recorded. I'm going to do it once dry, and then I'm going to re replay it again, and I'm going to start increasing this fader on my bass chorus auxiliary input. Here is the track again as it was recorded. Okay, now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to play that again and I'm going to start slowly increasing my uh, fader on the, uh, the bass chorus auxiliary input. And you'll hear gradually what is going to happen is this chorus that I've inserted on this auxiliary input track is going to begin to affect the tone of what you're hearing. Here we go. Terrible playing. I'm, I apologize for that. <laughs> um, I'm going to take this down to 50%. Either way, you can hear what's going on here. I'm still keeping my clean recorded track the way it was. It was recorded. I'm still getting that sent out through my studio monitors. But now I'm introducing this chorus bass and what what's even cool about that is I can literally take my clean bass maybe pull it over left and then I can take the chorus bass and now I've got my clean will be panned uh, a little bit left and my chorus bass will be panned right. So if I play that back, it's probably hard to hear on your end, but if you've got headphones, you can probably hear right now how on the right side I've got a bass chorus, now on the left side I've got a clean bass sound. Anyway, um, that is a very basic introduction to the possibilities that you have when you route effects in parallel um, uh, fashion. Um, again, uh, there are certain time-based effects that you would want to do this with all the time. Any reverbs, uh, flangers, choruses, delays, any pitch shifters. Uh, any harmonizers, any phase shifters, anything that that where your your uh, it's it's a time based effect. You are going to want to route it this way. Now, 
If you've got a compressor, limiters, EQs, uh, expanders, companders, you know, uh, leveling amps, stuff like that, preamps, you can send them right to your insert. You know, I would put an EQ and a compression right on my channel. Not worried about what that's going to do. Uh, uh, to my processor. You would want to do this because um, time-based effects tend to have more of a drain on your processor. So let's say I've got three guitar parts. Instead of having three delays or three different reverbs, or I should, you know, um, I would put them all, I would put one reverb on a auxiliary input and then I would route each guitar into that reverb so, and then I can control again here how much of that is being processed through my regular signal. Um, and my processor is not processing three or four different reverbs. It's still processing only the one. So I'm, I'm greatly reducing the, the strain on my computer's processor. Um, that's going to do it for uh, this quick tutorial I know was it we really didn't do much but I just I, I think this is this is a pretty important concept here uh, when I started using this it really changed uh, the quality of my mixes um, the next video we're gonna go into mixing a little larger session and we're gonna go into maybe putting a couple more effects uh, in parallel mode uh, until then uh, you have a great week and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video thank you and you have a great one